What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. We got some big news here going forward. Take a look at this. Fed's wall of worry. Government shutdown looming. The UAW strike. Student loan repayments for over 40 million Americans. $95 oil. And that's not all. Interest rates at 22-year highs. The Fed says they probably will be raising interest rates here yet again this year. Whew. Yeah, that's a lot just for one sentence there with a few commas. Also, I'll be doing a few less videos here over the course of the next week as we, our family, gets ready for my wife's kidney surgery. My wife, if you've been watching my channel here for a while, my wife has a rare kidney disease called uh, involving MSK. Her kidney disease, they're going to be going into her kidney with a laser and cleaning out her kidney per se and releasing stones impacted in the meat of her kidney um, here over the course of the next couple days. Hopefully praying that that goes well. Uh, this is something we've been looking forward to for a long time. So if you see us not really on our normal regular schedule of 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know why. So, um, yeah, thoughts and prayers that that goes well. Uh, I'll keep you up to date on how that goes. Yeah, so big, big thing here for us. Also, millions of people's jobs are in uh, in jeopardy potentially here with also a lot of other things here with this potential government shutdown on the line here. Take, uh, take a look at what Speaker Kevin McCarthy and leader of the Republicans has to say on this. I got to ask you, the holdouts today were saying they're still holding out on a CR and on the probes bills. What's your reaction to that? Well, that's difficult. This is why we've been trying to pass these since July. When I took over, I wanted to make sure there were never to be an omni. An omni is when it doesn't go through committee. So in the debt ceiling, we put the provision in where you cut across the board 1% if you don't do all 12 bills. That made the Senate for the first time actually do their bills. We've gotten ours out of committee, and since July, I've been trying to be able to bring them to the floor individually. But these same people have been blocking the rule, just like they blocked the rule twice last week. So I'm not quite sure understanding when they think they're fighting to have regular order, that's what we've been fighting to do the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a new rule up that could pass four more of our appropriation bills. That would equal about 73% of all the discretionary spending already. And what I've always said is, mm -hmm. I want us to do our jobs and do it individual bills, so let's keep government open mm -hmm. while we finish the job. They have delayed us. I remember there was a time back where um, Matt Gates wouldn't let us bring anything up on the floor, and that, that took a lot of time away, but we keep working. I believe we can get it done. So Marjorie Taylor Greene just today said she's voting against that rule. You certainly expected that because you kept... I knew that. Yeah, yeah I, I was trying to... Well, it was... I was going to try to fix it on there to vote in a different way, but it's mm -hmm. in other ones, too. I understand. She's been very clear about that. That's that's not... She, she, her, she has a real concern about one issue, and I want to work with her on that. Okay. And her point is she, she's been very fair, wants to be able to know... Uh, that it's a vote separate, and it, it's difficult inside the rule when it's on multiple bills, though. But you, last week you said that these holdouts are trying to burn the place down. Do you still feel that way? Well, if you're holding out now, you're trying to get a person into a shutdown. You, you've been stopping the bills from ever coming up. I don't know how you stand up and then say, well, he hasn't brought them up. The only reason they haven't come up, they've been out of committee, people have read them. I've been asking for amendments since back to July, mm -hmm. so we can bring them up. But if you can't pass the rule, it's hard to bring it up. It's almost that they, they want to walk you into a shutdown, then blame you for the shutdown. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think we should show we can govern, and that's what the majority of us all have been doing. Look, I watch what's happening on the border each and every day because of this Biden administration. I want to secure our border. And I think everybody wants to be able to do that. But if you don't bring the bills up, it makes it very difficult for us to be successful. I asked you this yesterday. Should Americans expect a shutdown at this point? No, we never give up. So you don't think there's going to be a shutdown? Look, I think we're able to work through this at the end of the day, get there. Do you think it's time to work across the aisle? Look, I work with anybody who wants to work with us, but um, I haven't heard a lot of people across the aisle that wants to secure the border. 
uh, we have to secure that border. You've watched, we've set new records because of this Biden administration. Biden seems as though that he wants to shut down if he can keep the border open. I think the real thing to do, let's keep government running and stop uh, a shutdown. Yeah, so as you can see here, they have a lot of things to work forward, uh, work towards. And um, if you noticed, these were all problems just within the Republican Party that he has to work mainly through just these inter problems uh, within his own party. And it seems like he doesn't even really want to go to a vote uh, with the Democrats, a bipartisan bill, because he'll probably get ousted by pot potentially uh, Matt Gates and um, Matt Gates's you know group there might call for a vote to oust him as speaker with the kind of what they call the far right Republicans. So when we talk about you know Congress is divided. Yeah, you you really have a divided Congress now because we have the Republicans and Democrats, which always have you know completely different viewpoints on a lot of things. But now we have even the Republican Party divided as well. And honestly, it Kevin McCarthy, you know, he really at least knows the procedures, how to you know get things done, what they need to do. And if they tried to oust him and replace him with someone else, um, I think they're going to have a hard time getting somebody else to actually try to get them more divided, or I'm sorry, more, more together. I think it's going to be a tough situation there. You guys can let me know your thoughts on this. Also, the UAW, United Auto Workers, says it is prepared to strike for months in leaked messages if they don't get the higher wage increases and potentially, um, remember, they want a 32-hour work week and uh, up to 40 to 46% raises and to go back to, to, to traditional pensions, remember, that GM, Ford, and Stellantis have already offered up to 21% raises. They say it's not good enough. Take a look here. The United Auto Workers Union is prepared to strike the automakers for months, according to leaked messages. The messages between Jonah Furman, communication directors at the United Auto Workers Union, and other members of the labor community detail personal thoughts about the union strategies against the big three. The comments broadly confirm what the UAW has publicly said already, that they lay out the union's willingness to use innovative measures to obtain the best possible deal for the workers. In one message, Furman wrote, if we can keep them wounded for months, they don't know what to do. This is reoccurring reputations damage and Operation Chaos. In another, he writes, the beauty is we've laid it all out in public and they're still helpless to stop it. Wow. Neither Jonah Furman nor the UAW responded to requests for comments, but Furman is not directly involved in negotiations with the big three. You know, a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings about this. I do too. It's a tough situation because people want good wages. I would too if I worked there, if I had family members working there, friends working there, or anything like that. But on the other hand, the average car payment is $725, $730 a month, and it's only going to go higher. So... This is this is a really really tough, and um, labor's five to ten percent of the current price of a vehicle, and will now be even more when they get their twenty one to thirty or thirty five percent raises or whatever it's going to be. 
So we know that a $725 average cost of a car payment now is going to go even higher. And we also know that GM caused the largest corporation bankruptcy ever in the history of the United States back in 2009. <laughs> yeah, I almost wanted to say they had $100 million in liabilities. But then I, yeah, I had, to, I had to think about that for a second. They had almost $100 billion in liabilities. $100 billion in liabilities. Because they had, again, almost, uh, they had $82 billion in assets and $173 billion in liabilities. So they had like 90-some billion dollars in liabilities. That's how bad off GM was was with this largest bankruptcy ever in 2009, which is not that far ago. So now imagine you have a few decent years, a few good years, and now all your workers want 46% raises. They all want to go back to traditional pensions, which is just even more money. And all your workers want to go down to a four-day work week. So they want to go... So imagine... Imagine you're a business owner and all your workers say, hey, we want a 46% raise. We also want, in addition to this 46% raise, we want to go down to a four-day work week and we want to go back to a traditional pension, which is basically just like a 401k. We want you to you know, fund it. We, it's, it's 401k and a pension are basically the same thing. People don't really understand this, but it's basically like, you take money out of our paycheck every week and you add money into it and it goes into an investment account and it grows, okay? But the, the reality of it is, is that they want the company to add money into it every paycheck it is the same kind of thing as a pension, okay? They'll take money out of the worker's paycheck and they will put money into the paycheck, which basically just means more money from coming from the company. Okay. So they want to take money from the company for the pension. They want to go down to a four day work week and still get the same paycheck, but not only get the same paycheck, get a 46% raise on top of that. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that inflation's crazy right now and everybody wants to get the best amount of pay. But I understand, I'm just a realist here. I understand what this is going to do to the price of everything. What this is going to do to the price of cars. Airline pilots just got a 46% raise. We all know the airline pilots are pretty well paid. Steward is one of 46% raise. Uh, I mean, UPS just got their massive raise. And just look at every single industry. I mean, Bank of America just says that they're now raising their minimum pay to $23 an hour and it's going to go to $25 an hour. Just look at the cost of every single thing going up, okay? And a lot of these industries like Bank of America is raising it willingly because they can't get good people compared to the other banks. If you're in the banking industry, even if you're just like a teller, why would you go to Bank of America if the other banks are paying more, okay? It's a free market. So just put this into perspective on why everything costs so much. If the average car right now is almost $50,000, it's like forty-eight dollars to $49,000 for the average car. Again, some being more, some being less. It's just going to go up from here. The average car payment is $725. It's just going to go up from here. Now, if you work for GM, if you work for Ford, of course you want to make the most money. This is why it's a it's a tough situation right now. But as you as a consumer, when you go to buy the next car, I have seen so many comments from people that say, we're really torn because we want to get a new car. Our car's five, six, seven years old. We paid it off. But it's like the car payments double from where we had it before. We just can't afford it. We just can't afford it. Or we have to go get like a real cheapo car. It's not equivalent to what we had before. We're just going to keep the car we have. This is just realistic thinking, guys. It's just, this is the problem is these, these car companies are actually pricing themselves out of the market. And 
And this is, they're actually losing their jobs. They're losing their jobs to AI or they're losing their customers. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. New videos come out here every day, normally at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For the next several days, we're going to maybe have a few less videos, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I love you guys. Thanks for being a part of our family, and I'll keep you up to date here with my wife's uh, journey or her kidney surgery. Hopefully, everything goes well. Thanks for being a part of our family. I will keep you up to date. Click here to see my new video about the silent depression that we're in. Or click here to see the new video about the U.S. and Russia, quote, directly at war. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.